I can kind of go over a couple of things here at the start with some good tips for success with word problems. Um, most of the time, figuring out what you're looking for right away will make your life easier because that way, as you're putting your equation together, it's going to be a little bit easier to know what your end result should be. Um, and then again, the keywords, understanding there's a whole heap and lot of different words for add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And it's not going to be straightforward every time. So the keywords kind of help us with some of those. And then equals isn't always equals. We can find some little words in there as well. So I've found it helpful when I'm doing these before to be like, all right, so we'll, we'll start real straightforward. Eight less than three times the number is 13. Find the number. You're like, okay, I'm finding the number. The number's the variable. So let's see here. Eight less than three times the number. Now, sometimes I'll even not even go in order. I'll be like, wait, three times the number. Okay, I can Would do this. Would it be eight minus three X? Ooh, now that's going to be the question here. We're going to do an... Three X minus eight. Oh dear. Okay, hang on. We got to write both of these down because we got we got to think about this. Okay, so there's the question at hand. So both of them are reasonable in that we see the word less. We see minus. Okay, that's good. Three times the number. Three X. That's good is is equals is 13 that's good the question now becomes which order do these go in so let's read it back one more time eight less than three times the number take away eight from three times the number so which one is it is it pink or blue pink. it's pink so here's one thing to be aware of when you see the word less than, and I'm actually going to make a mark of this. When you see less than, that's the one time that your order is going to switch. Most word problems, if you read them right in order, like you're reading a book or something like that, you're going to get the equation right in a row. But they got to be a stinker every once in a while and throw something like less than in. And when we see less than, it switches the order of things. But both of those, excellent thoughts. But this is the one we're going to roll with. And again, how much work you feel you need to show or not show, bless you, to get to the answer is your call, as long as we get to the right answer, that is. Get our X term by itself. Do our opposite to do that. Get that on out of there. In the magic number, we have it. So again, pretty, pretty straightforward. Sometimes they're going to get a little crazier than that, but not, not anything too bad. Let's see here. Amy scores seven points more than two times Jill on their unit test. Whoa, seven more than two times. Look out. Oh, Jill, this isn't going to go well. Okay, if Amy scored an 87, what did Jill score? So X is going to be Jill's score. Okay, Jill scores? No, Hardy. Score, one score. Okay, let's tackle this again. Oh, Again, this is why Hardy is not an English teacher. I, I don't think of these things sometimes. Yes, it would be Jill's score. So let's see here. Amy scores seven more than two times Jill. What would that look like? Seven. Wait, two X plus seven. Okay. 2x plus 7. 2 times Jill, 2 times x, and 7 more is going to equal Amy's score of 87. And now we're just back to doing things. We're going to see how, how it did not go well for Jill here. Oh, Jill. 
Jill needs a retake. Jill needs to do practice. Jill needs to study. Or maybe Jill is just having an off day because that does happen sometimes. Oh, my. Yeah. Uh, that's not, yeah. That, that doesn't look good. Not good. We're like, we're not even close. That's, yeah. Yeah, we need to... Maybe Amy needs to help Jill get ready for the next one. I think I think that's what we need to find here. So, okay. We just got to get beyond that, though. Got to get beyond that. All right. I am going to freeze frame this up for a moment. Let's tr try to set up number three on your own. We'll, we'll get back together here in a moment and see... Anybody come up with how many hours we work with you? Now, this is the funny thing with ad. Okay. So Ava's making $7 per hour. When you see that word per, that's normally where your X is going to come into play. Plus a weekly bonus of $10. Now, I'm assuming probably a lot of you went with the way we've got in the black equation here. The nice thing about ad is... It doesn't matter which order I put it in. I'm still going to get the same answer. Subtract can make a difference, so I have to be careful of that. But, yep, I heard lots of tens. That's good, that's good, that's good. So we got that one set. All right, let's see. This could get a little more interesting, so let's see here. Emmanuel is two times older than Jamie, or Jaime, it depends. Their ages add to 54 find both of their ages okay so they didn't give us one direct person here so let's think this through so let's say let's just roll with this let's say let's say jamie's x so would you agree because it says their age is add so jamie plus emmanuel Okay, it's going to be 54. Sometimes putting it into words can make it a little bit easier to figure out what we're going to do here. So if that's true, and we said, hey, Jamie's going to be X. So, okay, so X. If Emmanuel's two times older, how can I represent Emmanuel? Uh, like 2X. Like 2X. And we're there. We've got Jamie, we've got something for Emmanuel, and we have their total. So if I got 1x and I add another 2x to it, we got 3. And we can divide by 3. So this is one of the problems, though, where I can't just get to the number and say, I'm good, because the question is find both of their ages. So Jamie's 18. How old's Emmanuel going to be? Uh, let me see. Uh, 26? Close. 36. Okay. Ooh, now that's even better. Okay, see, I like when we think outside the box here. Because you could. I did 2 times 18, but I heard, you know, you could just do 54 minus 18, and that would work too. Multiple ways to get to answers. That's what I like here. And because everybody thinks math, there's always like one way. That is so not true most of the time. There's so many ways. All right, we're almost there. Self paying an account $25 an hour to do her taxes. That's cheap. Um, plus a $100 one time fee. Her total bill was $250. How many hours did the accountant work? Okay. How many hours? So there's our X. So she paid 20. Oh, there's that per word again. When we see the per, there's there's the X. So 25 X. A hundred bucks a head for no matter what. No matter how many hours it took, the accountant. We're only paying that hundred plus whatever that is. Her total bill is 250. And again, we could have put that into words. We could have put fee plus hourly equals our 250. 
we just got to find with all these things the way that clicks the most with you. And the easiest way to find that is just by jumping in. Oof, duh. It must have been some accounting work. Six hours Dang. to do some taxes. Must have been some fancy business stuff in there, some investment things. I mean, hey, that feels more like a question I'd do in business math than, than we're doing in here. All right. Let's see. We're going to try this. I'm going to try this one more time. I'm going to challenge. You guys are up to the challenge, I think, because you've been doing great with these. I'm freeze framing again. Try to come up with your equation for six. Now, this one, there's a couple challenges. I'm not even going to say there's not. So, dang, quicker than I am. I'm not even done yet. Be curious to see if y'all came up with a different way than me doing this again. Because it seems like that seems to be the way we're rolling here lately. We think differently. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. So hopefully by now you've kind of got an idea with your equation rolling through. Anybody got an answer they want to throw out? And you round. Okay. No? Any others? I'll, I'll give you a hint. It is going to be a whole number. Nine. Close. I have a feeling what might have happened. So where we're going, we might have tried eliminating the fraction early. I'm not sure. Oh, I got Because here, now sometimes people try to make one big fraction out of it too and that can change things a lot but kind of as we take it in pieces so nine more we know we're going to be adding nine to something uh, that's probably okay then a number divided by eight so if a number is divided by eight it's like doing a fraction is ten and even if i put the nine plus that would be okay we'd subtract the nine out of there Get our fraction by itself, and then I just got to remind myself, hey, the opposite of divide, fraction is to multiply. That, that one was tricky. That one was a little trickier. And like I said, we're going to be building towards that stuff as we move on with these. But today, we're just going to kind of play a little bit. Play a little bit. We're going to probably have to wiggle our way out of some stuff, but that's all right. So here's what I want you to be playing with. Okay, so we're going to be over here on 5 and 6. Here's what I would say. I would say for right now, and you can take your pick. It depends on how you're feeling today. Okay, pick evens or odds. So do all the left side on both sides or do all the right side on both sides. I am going to jump in, though, because I see a problem right away that I want to make sure we don't get stuck on it. I also want to see if there's a second one of those. Ooh, there is. Thank you. All right. We'll get that. Thank you. All right. The one I want to chat about, I want to chat about number two because this is kind of interesting. The sum, okay, so we're going to be adding. The sum of three consecutive numbers is 27 you're like okay let's see so let me let me just do a four instance here so three consecutive numbers three consecutive numbers could be three four five okay three consecutive numbers could be one two three because i'm adding one each time is what it means when i'm doing consecutive now we're going to get weird. Get ready. The first number is X. What's the second number? X. Nope. It'd be the same number. 
Look at the pattern we've been doing. Take the first. Closer. I like the thought. Yes. Because let's say x was 4. 4 plus 1 would be 5. What would I have to add to 4 to get to 6? X plus 2. Yes. So if it says consecutive numbers, you're going to start with x. And then the next consecutive number, whatever x is, we don't know yet. We're going to add 1. And then whatever that is, we're going to add 2. And we could keep doing that and doing that and doing that if we wanted to. Okay? That one is weird. So here, I have three x's, because remember, they each have a 1 in front of them. I don't see it, but it's there. And these are on the same side of the equals as well. So I just combine them. We're not doing opposites. And finally, my equation looks normal. Well, as normal as numbers and letters going together can be. So if I can survive that first part of it being really, really weird, and then again, what are the three numbers? 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. 8 plus 2 is 10. And I can get all three. Now, I'll admit one confession to make here. Well, Hardy, couldn't I really just, if I wanted to, kind of play with numbers and be like, well, let's see, 4, 5, 6. No, that's too low. Uh, 6, 7, 8. Oh, that's a little too low. And just keep playing until I get an answer. Yes. But that doesn't get you involved with the thought process to build these, which is what you need to be doing with these. I don't want you just guess and checking numbers in your head until you find something. Because what if you get an answer? Sometimes it's a decimal or a fraction. You will. Then we're not going to be ready for that. So keep trying to push yourself into using the variables and making the equations for them and not just guessing and checking. Um, I do have an answer key online now. I got that going after yesterday, going oopsie. I still have a physical one up front. Um, you can check as you go. That's fine. And can I think of anything else? I don't think so.